Contrary to popular wishes, we haven't all been lynched by angry KDE users. This is episode 16 of the Anti-KDE Podcast. As a reminder, I'm Graham Morrison. I'm Graham Morrison. I'm Graham Morrison. And I'm Richard Storman. And in this episode of the podcast, we are going to talk about Sony dropping support for Linux while Nokia goes head first, the hot topic, we report back on our experiences with text mode only life, and our open ballot, is it right to be zealous about free software? Of course, we are publishing news, features, and more on TuxRadar.com all the time, so bookmark it today. And if you want to subscribe and keep us off the streets, go to tinyurl.com slash podcastlxf and get 13 shiny issues of Linux Format Magazine through your postbox a year. All right, then, news. The biggest story over the last couple of weeks is that Nokia has released a new Linux handset, the N900. What do we make of it all? Shiny. Shiny. It shiny looks very gadget. nice. It looks great. Does it? Yeah. It's running Linux, the Maimo, Mimo, Mumo, Mimo. Haribo distribution. It's got a slide out <laughs> keyboard, uh, 256 megs of RAM, 600 megahertz CPU. Um, so it's, it's kind of in the same spec ballpark as the iPhone. I, I, I do love the, the slash dot story about it because it just says where Nokia is going wrong. Cause it says, it says something like, and it's got the hardware specification, 256 megs of RAM, mm-hmm. blah, inch screen, blah, CPU, blah, 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 blah ETC. <laughs> <laughs> they realize it doesn't really matter what megapixel it's got anymore. What's the actual system going to do? And now it's running, it's running QT, isn't it? I think. Yeah, it is. Yeah. About but, yeah. time. I think QT is going to prove to be the saviour of Nokia, or well, that's their plan at least. But how, how can they make it attractive? I mean, looking at some of the stats, it's a lot thicker than the iPhone, it's a lot heavier than the iPhone, and that's, that's what it's going up against, isn't is it, it? It's a is pocket it, computer. Is it any cheaper than the iPhone? I don't know. No, it's actually slightly more expensive, oh. ever so slightly. Pricing strategy fail. Mm. Well, I, th- I can see what they're doing with this. It's, it's a bigger device, it's a better device, it's actually a more capable device. Yeah, fair enough, that makes a lot of sense. And if they can make this work, then miniaturize, miniaturize, miniaturize. Get it smaller. Take the keyboard out, whatever. Get it smaller and more cheap, basically. Mm-hmm. I didn't see whether it got a multi-touch screen, because I don't think it has. I'm not sure about that. No. that. That would be a bit of a fail, I think. That that kind of... Would uh, you rather have no multi-touch or wonky HTC <laughs> multi-touch rip-off? I, I just don't want stylus touch. That's right. That's what single yeah. touch scans to me like. <laughs> what about slide-out keyboards? Who likes slide-out keyboards? I used to love them. And then? <laughs> then I got an iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, um, do you miss it? Would you no, still like no, one? No, I, it... I don't miss it, no. Um, maybe I'd like a slide out keyboard if it had um, uh, braces. Ah, for programming <laughs> yeah. on the moon. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, no, I don't really miss it at all. No, I think I agree with Paul there. I used to like it. I lo- loved the idea of it, and when I actually got around to using it. No. I, li- I like the way the. Um, I mean, there was a great article about the difference between the text correction on Android and on iPhone. Mm-hmm. And they've both put a lot of work into making the soft keyboards better. And it's things like the way as you type, the iPhone learns the words you use. Yeah. Without having to say, add to dictionary, add to dictionary. Of course, add to dictionary. I've just typed it for a reason. So. <laughs> yeah, I use this word. Yeah. yeah, so it learns as you go, which is quite nice. And that kind of thing that makes a soft keyboard much, much nicer. Not that the iPhone's perfect. I find it deeply frustrating sometimes when it tries to correct your characters and then recorrect your characters yeah. and then insert all kinds of errors in what you're trying but you, to you ask. can turn correction off I've turned it you, off you can turn it off but by and large it's useful it's just frustrating sometimes so I'm, I'm surprised Nokia's taking a step backwards here I guess they're stuck with the hardware they've already purchased perhaps or who knows or maybe they haven't got a decent Linux soft keyboard implementation yet that rivals Apple's perhaps so yeah you think it's something they could work on but surely they get everything Google does now on their Android stuff, they can just nick bits of that and drop it into their stuff. Which is just too vastly different, perhaps. Java to Qt, Mimo. Possibly so, yeah. Is it going to be open? Will anybody be able to download the SDK and create their own binaries to run on the phone? Well, if it's Mimo, then I presume, presume, presume yeah. so, yeah. Well, that's nice. I guess they'll lock off the bits like the, the phone yeah. radio stuff. Bass again. band. And, yeah. yeah. The rest would be nice. Second news item, Google Chrome has now gone 64-bit. Wow. How revolutionary is that? That's great, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a 64-bit machine. Do you not? No. You're Philistine. Oh, no. man. I've only got a 63-bit machine, so... It's 64-bit on Linux first, which I think is cool. Mm-hmm. I think it shows some sort of actual commitment to make cross-platform, cross-architecture, the kind of things Linux users really want, work anywhere, out of the box. And that's great. 
I'd Excellent. rather they get Flash working first. <laughs> so more than Flash. Is that still, still in beta, is it? I can't get it to work. There are, there are hacks using Lib Flash or whatever it is from Mozilla. but uh, I think, doesn't, doesn't Grease Monkey also work? So they are, they are taking bits, yeah, bits yeah. of business from Mozilla, aren't they? Yeah. The bits they like. So <laughs> has anybody here actually moved to Chrome full-time or is thinking about switching to Chrome full-time? Well, I do keep it open on my desktop all the time, uh, just for Gmail, really, Gmail and Google Docs. Just That's exactly what you clipper. said last time. That's amazing. It is, isn't it? <laughs> well, I do keep it open on my desktop um, for Gmail and yeah. Google Docs um, well, because it's just so much faster. Well, with the ajax type yeah, of stuff yeah, yeah. and the JavaScript. And imagine so. And to be fair, if, if actually it doesn't support Flash, I'd probably switch to it too. It's <laughs> <laughs> good enough reason as any. Up your productivity. No more YouTube. I um, get some work done. I get some work done. So what, what kind of uh, effects does doubling the bits from 32 to 64 have on JavaScript performance? That's a very good question. I, I expect it's faster. <laughs> is, it, is it twice as fast, though, or is it some no, sort of factor? No, it's not going to be twice as fast. It's no, not like in, Sonic in fact, 2, no. Uh, there's a bit more CPU cache wasted, because you, you, not every bit of data 64 bits, you're wasting some space. Um, there are more registers, and you can address more RAM. And, uh, and bigger about numbers. It, really. That's about it. You can yeah. use bigger numbers. Thanks, Paul. That's a, that's a great answer. Yeah, it's a great answer. Yeah. <laughs> well, also, I presume it means it can take advantage of all the SSE 4 stuff, I guess. 4.1, the <laughs> latest CPUs. Anyway, it's, 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 it's slightly faster. And uh, that's good. Always good. Cool. And finally, um, Sony has announced the PS3 Slim, which will not support Linux. Ooh. Is this a massive crippling blow for I, the Linux desktop? I think it's sad. It, it, in, I don't know if it's irony, but um, just last week or the week before, the, you know, the people who make Yellow Dog Linux, I actually got one in for review, announced a US, um, Yellow Dog Linux on a USB stick that will boot off a PS3. It's quite a nice idea. I mean, but, they, but not this PS3. Not this <laughs> PS3, no. For the first time, people will be able to avoid having to repartition their drive on a PS3 and get Linux running. So this, is this Yellow Dog again? Um, getting bitten. Yeah, I think <laughs> so, yeah. They, 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 they were doing quite well with Apple for a while. That Apple dropped PowerPC and switched to Intel. Well, we've got PS3 now. Oh. But what, what changes have Sony made to stop Linux support? I mean, if all the chips are still there, and unless they've changed some sort of just well, removed yeah. booting. You know, if you, yeah, you think if you can still play Killzone 2 on a PS3 sim, they could manage Linux. But, yeah. You know, apparently, apparently not. The official reason is that um, they don't want to rewrite the hypervisor, the driver stuff, Okay. Um, for the new hardware. Which, as you say, if the hardware hasn't changed, which it hasn't, I presume it's been die shrunk. Yeah, uh, they, they, can't, similar. they can't do too much to it, can they? Otherwise, Correct, it, yeah. it, it, so it hasn't really changed, so we're yeah. all rather surprised. I think it's just laziness, one less thing to support by So it's just official support then? Alleg- so allegedly. No, people can still hack it. No, no, no the, the, you well, can hack in- it, maybe hack it. I don't know if the PS3 is hackable. Really, I don't. Um, but it, previously, you could go through one of the menus and choose install other OS and install Linux that way, so that's gone. I've got a PS3 and I was never ever planning to use that feature. <laughs> I'm not really missing it. Maybe it'll annoy some researchers perhaps who do want to be able to use it, but they didn't even get all the SPUs, did they, on the CPU? And the big advantage is that the market will now be flooded with 60 gig PS3s. That's true. So that they, <laughs> they can pick up their network for cheap. <laughs> yeah. They can still run Linux. Maybe that's their plan to try and free up the market to give some space. I mean, I do actually have Linux on my PS3, but yeah, I barely ever use it. Unfortunately, I'm going to use it to use it in text mode only, or <laughs> <laughs> it might as well be in text mode only <laughs> because it's hard to get the mouse and keyboard working. <laughs> right, it's now time for the hot topic. Those of you still awake may remember that uh, last podcast we reported back on the results of our KDE challenge, during which we only used KDE for work. The horror. And, uh, uh, it wasn't. I, I didn't find it horrible, but anyway, that was <laughs> used three point five. But. Anyway, that's all in the past. We've moved on. Um, we've taken one step for one step up the evolutionary ladder. <laughs> there you see, you see. <laughs> it's all about freedom. And we've we freed ourselves from uh, from the GUI and um, and spent two weeks working purely in text mode. If only we did. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly, uh, I have to say my bit. my experiences of text mode were were superb. Um, <laughs> I find it no barrier to productivity because I don't actually do much work on my Linux machine. Um, but uh, but Graham, you, um, it was the thing is um, I could definitely get used to it. It reminds me of uh, when you first got a Commodore sixty four, you know, and you learn absolutely everything about it, and you do everything you possibly can, and you become incredibly productive with it. I could have done that. 
if there weren't deadlines and other things that got in the way. If, if, if I had enough time to become proficient with the command line, I'd have been just as fast or faster than I am on the desktop. But as it was, I'm too used to visual spell checking in openoffice.org <laughs> and using the GIMP to take my screenshots. Now, you know, I can use, I can use image magic and I can install spell checking on Vim or Emacs, but it's getting, it's getting the configuration to that optimum level that takes the time, and I didn't quite have the time. Surely, though, if you were working in text mode, you wouldn't have to take screenshots. Well, I've still got to review the software, or, you know, you could take screenshots on the command line, so I could run the software on a desktop in another screen and then take screenshots. And then they quickly press, yeah. press, press Alt F7. This so was probably the idea, back. yeah, <laughs> but I, I didn't. So let's think about some of the software that we were using. I used Lynx for web browsing, which actually works with Google Mail, the sim- simple HTML version. It was really nice, too. It's really, really fast. We uh, The first thing we did was upgrade, up, um, change the Grub settings so that we got a, a much better screen resolution for text mode. Um, so Lynx worked well, and then we tried Center IM for... Um, <laughs> For Google Chat, which caused some problems by erasing names associated with contacts in Google Talk. Just to clarify, Center IM writers, I will find you, <laughs> and I will do bad things to you. Because it, it, it fiddled with all my Gmail contacts. It, it removed, it removed or even all, your wife. It removed all their names. It's, they're now just called Okachi. Oops, that's Mike's, <laughs> that's Mike's personal email address. Doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, rather than rather than like Mike, um, which is very annoying. And then, worst of all, it seemed to invite random people from my contacts list to go on Gmail chat. People I don't really know because they've emailed me once or twice before. And I've been saying, hi, Paul, what do you want? What? <laughs> Why? Why? <laughs> I'm searching my Gmail to find out who they are and just ignore them quickly because I don't like them very much. It's strange, and it's not very nice. Why does it do that? Or worse, why does Gmail let it do that? Yeah, there's two sides to it, aren't there? I mean, I actually really liked that. Um, it looked that fantastic. Yeah, it, 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 it's functionality. It yeah. amazing. It, you know, it had yeah. multiple panes, and it basically recreated a GUI, um, Instant Messenger. I used a client um, called FreeTalk. FreeTalk. Which was, it's just a Jabber client, and you just type in your Gmail address. It doesn't even ask you to type in the tdistalk.google.com oh, and, and change the ports and use... It worked, and, and it worked perfectly. It was brilliant. And unlike um, Center IM, it, 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 you just got a command line, and you typed in your email address and then your message, and it sent you the message. And if you're in a conversation, it simply prefixed each line with your email address. You could delete that, press tab, and try to autocomplete whatever names were online. And you could also type bash commands straight from there. So really? it was kind of like an enhanced bash with Jabber IM capabilities. So you could go about doing your work then, and then still be in, in this conversation. <laughs> well, yeah, you, you'd need to. It took over the whole terminal, so you need to use oh, screen or or a different terminal for for the work side. But um, yeah, that was nice. Very very refreshing to use something like that as opposed to Copeat. I, I actually uh, carried on using Center I am, and I have to admit, the guys who wrote it, it's very very functional. It's everything I want in a smart way. I had I had a few problems though because I'm a big screen user. And the new Ubuntu has new screen profile stuff. And it's, it's just very cool. First thing, I, first thing I did was set up, you know, three or four tabs of the screen thing, all the, and named <laughs> them all. So this would be like, you know, Gmail, and this would be, so you can see them all really nicely. That was great. But in center I was, I think it was F9 for, for some sort of settings or something. And F9 was also mapped to screen settings. Pressing F9 would bring up a screen window saying, hey, do you want to change your profile or change your theme or, you know, cool, very cool stuff. But in limited time frame, I actually had to fiddle with this stuff. Uh, I couldn't figure out how to make screen not use F9 and pass the F9 yeah. key to center IM. So perhaps I'm just being stupid. <laughs> Maybe one of the commenters could figure that problem out for me. Dot screen RC you know. or something. Maybe I, I just want to say, hey, you know, maybe it's like control alt F9, but you know, it means bypass screen. Give the F9 to my program, please. Yeah, yeah. Uh, much a way of doing it somehow. That was annoying. Otherwise, I had a great experience. It, Gmail is so much faster in Lynx. It's ridiculous, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it's, it's ridiculous. It's, yeah. Even faster than it is in Chrome. As a non-Chrome user, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Graham? Um, I, I didn't use Link. I used E-Link. E-Link? Uh, which, um, yeah, E-Link, that's it. Um, which, yeah, I had a similar experience, although I didn't have JavaScript in school, installed. I could have I could have gone there, the there whole There is a JavaScript yeah, yeah. engine, isn't there? But I, I didn't get yeah. around to doing that, so that, that held me back a little bit. But, yeah, I loved it. It was great. Lynx actually made... Um, the live cricket updates from the oval much better because rather than displaying an image, it uh, it shows you the alt text, <laughs> which uh, which which you know lends an air of mystery of, of, and of intrigue. You know you'd get the you know Australia you know two hundred and five for one 
alt text picture of Lord Lord Mandelson <laughs> <laughs> enjoying Just, the cricket. That's, that's great. Oh, how how does it work? Because he's staring intently at the ball, you know, like, <laughs> like a game of Quidditch. <laughs> <laughs> Chanting, mumbling, mumbling, <laughs> mumbling under the breath, under the breath. <laughs> the, the, um, the application I couldn't find a replacement for was a, a decent music player. I had to resort to uh, a play. And Harry. Uh, Herring? Harry. Harry. Oh, Harry. Yes, Harry is. Harry's uh, great. One I found about. Oh, you should have told me about it because that was the only thing I you. No, I didn't ask. That was in Hot Picks a while ago. Yeah, just, I put just, it in there. Just a couple of issues. Yeah. It? My ex- expert hot pickery. Ah. So it's full featured playlists. It, it's, it's, it's focused around party stuff, so you, it's, it's, you can reorder things on the right-hand pane quite easily. But uh, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's the I want to do. I remember getting a, an old Pentium seventy-five laptop to play music in text mode using MP3 Blaster. <laughs> it was great because you could downsample the MP3s. So seventy-five that's, that's megahertz, good. and it would play. Yeah, you're right. I remember those days when yeah. you couldn't barely decode an MP3. Exactly. Time. Yeah. yeah. Well, I couldn't use it in any other software, but MP3 Blaster rules. There is talk of a further challenge. <laughs> Um, but I think we should delay it for two weeks <laughs> <laughs> because Graham's going on holiday for two weeks, so it's not really fair. Uh, it is. It is fair. <laughs> no, <laughs> we all have to suffer. What is this challenge? We haven't mentioned it yet, have we? We only have to speak in French for the next no, two weeks. We, we <laughs> 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 <Mais> oui! <laughs> Graham, buff, buff. <laughs> Graham could walk that. That'd be brilliant. Get together a big gum sandwich. <laughs> Uh, no, we're thinking of... This is, sounds terrible. We're thinking of switching to Microsoft Services Online for two weeks. Oh, no. Which means dropping Google and using yeah, Bing. Using Hotmail. And then, and then using Hotmail. <laughs> 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 it sounds awful. I'm not sure we can do it. I've been banned from using my Hotmail account. What were um, you doing with it? I, I wasn't... <laughs> oh, yeah, Graham. I, I honestly wasn't doing anything with it. And, and I've been locked out of it for months, and then I got into it a couple of weeks ago, and there was a note saying, this account has been suspended for use that goes against our terms of, and conditions. Wow. wow. Did, it say, did it say what? No. Maybe it wasn't using it, perhaps. <gasps> <laughs> Maybe it wasn't clicking you on the adverts. To, we have to use it like once, a, um, once every two or three months. It's, something, it's, like, it's like the trial. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they're, they're out. <laughs> so any, anyway, uh, uh, Sorry, yeah. uh, this week, last week, some, some of these days, Microsoft came in to uh, Tux Radar HQ to uh, espouse how with awesome <laughs> Bing is. And um, it does, does look very, very fully featured. It looks very nice. Um, but for some reason, we all use, all use Google, basically habit, we all use Google. And it, it is potentially possible that in some respects, Bing is better than Google. But until we try it, until we force ourselves to try it, we're never going to know. So I, th- I think this is, this think is true. It it's like good. Bing Maps as well has this um, bird's eye view, which is not like the satellite view on Google Maps, which is already really good. But this is at an angle. It seems to be at a, not quite a 45 degree angle, but it's brilliant. You get a really good view of the side of building. Does it use Silverlight, or is that just... No, no, no just, just no. pictures from Google Maps. Oh, right, right. It's, it has satellite view as well, so you can do angle or flat on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is, is it like the um, the weather map that they use on the on the BBC weather reports, <laughs> where, where Scotland is about the same size as Devon? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's really good, um, and it's one of those things I thought, well, I haven't... You know, you just think, well, it's Microsoft, so I'm not going to use it, but there is a case that perhaps they're doing something good. So... Should we try it two weeks? When or, Graham gets or wait back? for Graham to get back. Graham, sure, you don't want to miss out on that. On the action. Um, I, it sounds it sounds relatively easy. Yeah, okay. Should we wait? <laughs> we'll wait. But then, what are we going to do for the next one? After that? No, for the, the next what one. What happened to French? <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> okay. Does that mean the magazine has to be in French? Maintenant! <laughs> <laughs> All Tux Radar articles. And, all and the next podcast in French. Okay. Do, can we rename it from Bing? I hate the name Bing. Le Bing. Uh, apparently, Bing is the sound of found. Oh. <laughs> the sound of found. I found it. Wow. <laughs> That's what they told me with a straight face. I wasn't going to complain. Oh. Does it actually go Bing when you get your search results up? I don't think I I've done it. I have used it yet. <laughs> I'll tell you in two weeks or four <laughs> weeks even when Graham gets back. That's the problem with Microsoft, isn't it? You, they just... And with that, Microsoft Battle, we come to the halfway of our podcast. Still to come, the discovery of the week and our open ballot. Should we be zealous for free software? Okay, it's discovery of the fortnight. And who shall we start with? Um, it was me, Lester. Oh, it's Mike. Mike. Great. Great. What have you discovered, Mike? My, my discovery has been, as many people have already seen, Slackware 13.0 has been released. 
And in typical Slackware fashion, it's quite conservative. There's only KDE 4.2 and not 4.3. <laughs> Um, but it's got plenty of new features. There's, there's the new X server, so you don't necessarily need a config file for X to work. This is the first release to have official x86-64 support, and there's a new TXZ package format with better compression. So for those old-school slackers amongst us, it looks like a pretty good release. I will be playing around with it over the next couple of weeks. Well, I was thinking of switching, but it hasn't got KDE 4.3. <laughs> well, you could build it from source. It might make it really, really good. So what's the new package thing all about? Well, it used to be TGZ packages. Right. Um, Slackware packages, they're quite simple. They are basically tarballs with a little bit of meta information inside. They're not, you know, super complicated. Like well, like a readme.txt. <laughs> <laughs> no, there are, there are like um, pre-install, post-install scripts and things like that. But um, they've moved to a, just a different um, system for compression. Well, just for the compression. For the compression, right. yeah. So um, it makes them smaller, <laughs> can cram more onto the CDs, um, which is great. Excellent. Okay, Paul? I've got an undiscovery again. Um, Mike spotted that the Open Font Library <laughs> website <laughs> has now appeared to be some sort of spam slash parked domain now. Yeah. Uh, I think there's some sort of Hudzilla curse kicking in here. <laughs> Things are starting to go <laughs> wrong when I mentioned it. since you discovered it? Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, down with Vala, down with the Open Font Library. <laughs> 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 it's all going wrong. Um, it, it may be just temporary, just park or something, but it is just showing up adverts for fonts and stuff, which is lame. But my actual discovery um, uh, is that man pages are useless. <laughs> really? <laughs> having used the command line solidly for two weeks, apart from uh, very briefly to post something on Twitter, um, I was using BC, right? The calculator, the command line calculator thing. And I use it all the time as a command line calculator. You, you can just type, um, echo, um, your equation, you know, quote, 57 times 39 quote, pipe BC, and it'll give you the response as a, the result. And after a little bit of time, I was getting more adventurous. You know, I wanted to run things such as sines and cosines. So I looked in the man page and it took a bit of digging, but I found it at the end on line 500 or something. I had to use the S function and pass dash L to BC to make it work. Uh, not, not hard, but not really easy either. Um, other, other man pages, um, PS particularly is one of the worst examples, are frankly terrifying. Um, GCC, GCC makes sense, fair enough, it's a hard, hard a app aimed at hardcore users, so it makes sense to be hard, but PS, surely PS, uh, should be fairly common, everyone wants to know what apps are running right now. Um, so I think, as a result, uh, we need some sort of easier man pages that actually teach things, uh, focusing on what they need to know first, uh, giving lots of examples, ignoring useless options, uh, that'd be great. Yeah, so some man pages um, have a problem that they don't give any examples whatsoever. I think something like make ISO FS mm. or, or some one application in the past, um, you know, had a billion options, but it didn't have the examples at the bottom to say, you know, I just want to rip a DVD or, or <laughs> yeah. men code or something. It looks like, like we're trying to burn a CD. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what most of us only look in the man pages for. Exactly. And they come yeah. right in the very end, as you say. I, I think they should split them up. They should be simple man and hard man. Although, the, you know, perhaps there's GNU info as well thrown into all this. <laughs> Which nobody uses. Yeah, but isn't info just man with more key press options? <laughs> <laughs> it's like a text mode adventure game. For a manual. <laughs> cool. Well, um, I'll give Andrew a little bit more time to think about his. <laughs> <laughs> Mine is another command line related uh, discovery. It's only small, and I, uh, maybe you all know this, but I didn't know. MKDIR to make a directory mm -hmm. with the hyphen P option yeah, come on. creates nested directories <laughs> oh i didn't know that might be useful to some people you just type yeah. mcdar cd mcdar cd mcdar <laughs> cd well yeah yeah wow that's the truth now now i can uh, organize my music collection just like i got on the desktop <laughs> <laughs> andrew should we uh, come back to you at the end of the show um there's no point really is there <laughs> um i've discovered that a, ma a man in decent shape as in not enormously fat, if you can get your head through a gap, then you can climb your whole body through it. Really? That's apparently fact. Where, where did you, did you get trapped somewhere or I, something? <laughs> <laughs> on on your travel? I, I did actually, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I got trapped in a cupboard and had to climb out of a, of a gap that was about that big. That big? About Whoa! About this wow. big, yeah. Um, that's about hand span. Um, yeah, but I had to take my trousers off because my belt kept getting stuck. Can, can you please a bit of backstory to how you got trapped in this cupboard? No, I think I'll just leave it there as a mystery. <laughs> <laughs>
Were you able to reach through and pick up your trousers? I, I was, like Indiana Jones. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Yeah, it was really cool. And the whip. And, no, I left that there. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever finds that is, is in for a treat. And did you get the diamonds? <laughs> <laughs> I've got the Shankara stones. And now it's time for our open ballot. The question this fortnight, is it right to be zealous about free software? As in, uh, if we really care, free as in freedom, free as in price, free as in beer, free as in goodness, goodness knows what, does it really matter? If so, should we go out and preach the word to the people? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Graham? Um, no, I don't think we should. No, I think uh, we should. Uh, it's annoying when people preach to you. Everybody feels the same way. I'm sure um, it's great to get the information out there and uh, try and help get the information out there. Maybe we need a better ma- marketing campaign for Linux and open source and free software, but I really don't want to get in people's face and tell them what I think they should be doing. That's a really good idea, Graham. You should write that down. <laughs> <laughs> but, but surely there are already fanboys out there for all the other OSs. Yeah, and I find it deeply unpleasant. You know, it, it, it actually just annoys me. I mean, you, you look at any PlayStation forum or Xbox 360 forum, Anybody says anything that disparages the other side, and you just, or Windows 7 versus Linux. <laughs> it just becomes. Which, which you wrote. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's good to be positive, and I think it's good when asked to respond. You know, when people say, why do you use Linux? Give them the reasons that we like. So, a personal but, example, basically. Yes, exactly. Yeah, but wait un- until you are specifically asked. I, I recall um, last year the Free Software Foundation organized this campaign, or at least they tried to, uh, whereby. People would go into Apple retail stores and uh, they would book up slots with the the so-called geniuses in Apple retail stores and ask them questions about Apple's privacy, like a denial of service attack on the Apple stores, blocking them off in order to make a point. I think that's so bad. That is fundamentally very, very stupid because the people in Apple stores queuing up to buy a replacement battery or, you know, a mouse or something are not going to suddenly be swayed to the world of GNU because of a bunch of guys yeah. arguing up ahead from my personal experience people with that kind of attitude put me off and, yeah. and maybe i'm stubborn but i'm more tempted then to go and do exactly the opposite of what they're saying and, and that's what i'm afraid of i think it's counterproductive if, if they really wanted to make a, a stance they should have got some macbooks and put linux or her well, help, help yeah. gone in there and you say know. hey look this is really cool what have they got to be afraid of yeah, yeah. By, you know by showing that linux is genuinely better if that's what they believe yeah exactly well, presumably their plan is uh, if people can't even see OS X running. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're going to go in the shop and they're going to stand in front of all the MacBooks and not move. <laughs> <laughs> that, a lot of the, um, the Free Software Foundation tactics remind me of, of the, the superb cartoon first published in Punch at the time of the Suffragette campaigns called The Shrieking Sister, um, featuring a, a woman holding a placard screaming her head off outside some town hall meeting and another woman walks past and the, the caption is um, you think you think you help our cause while you're its worst enemy and um, I hope I've remembered that better than the Benjamin Disraeli and Gladstone <laughs> thing that I got wrong last fortnight <laughs> but um, hopefully we'll, we'll be able to put some sort of, of web link uh, <laughs> up to the source because you really could just you know gimp out this woman's face and put Beardy Stormen on there and it would make just as much sense now as it did in, you know, 1893 or, or whenever. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, on the one hand, I do respect Stallman for standing by his goals, from never being diluted, never just giving up and saying, oh, well, it's not worth it. But some of the tactics, like you say, the, the flame wars that you see between people, you know, arguing about Windows versus Linux, and the amount of zealotry on both sides is yeah. it's horrifying. Well, most of it's probably trolling, in which case it's for the lulls, but... <laughs> Honestly, Mike, have you ever thought, ever, be honest here, okay. ever thought, I wish Richard Stallman would just shut up? <laughs> uh, when he's singing the free software song, maybe, yes. It, that, actually, that song's on YouTube many, many times. He, he seems to feel no shame. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, well, he, he repeats the same points again and again and again, um, which sounds like can sound like a stuck record. I mean, the, the guy has done a lot, but... Uh, you know, in terms of marketing free software and freedom, I don't think it's been that effective. It reminds me of when I was a student, there was a big banner in the students' union about, um, I think it was about homophobia, and it said, 
if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. And I really hated that banner because <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't part of the solution and I immediately became you know, <laughs> complicit. And, no, and that, that turned me off the whole campaign. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not with us, you're against us. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You're helping the How terrorists you? to win. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Another quote I'm going to get wrong. Uh, is it a biblical quote? No, no. It's um, it's from Danton's Death by Georg Buchner. I was close. Um, <laughs> which I, I think came out in about either 1848 or 1830, something like. A he, quote? He who he who holds my sword when I go to defend myself kills me just as surely as if they had struck the blow. Um, sorry, I'm just showing. <laughs> <laughs> so while Graham surfs YouTube all day, <laughs> <laughs> and he's on Wikipedia. But has Storm and Zealotry helped the free software campaign? Because I don't think it probably has. I, I think it, it may have helped by not Stormen himself directly. And if we had an army of Stormans, it might be quite bad. But Stormen has his, his, his concrete set views. And then if some of those um, are spread into other people and are more diluted in spreading free software, then I think that really works. So... I wouldn't want to just get rid of Stallman just to, for him no, to retire no, no. at the moment. He's not maybe a, a very effective figure. At the moment, he's like an eccentric uncle. Well, <laughs> yes, you know, he's like a super condensed form of what we really want. But aren't you in, uh, embarrassed by that uncle and your mates come around? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, what, <laughs> that's kind of what I mean. Well, at, at least, I mean, it sounds terrible, at least he's better than ESR. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> This is true. And at RMS, I've got a lot of respect for the man. He's done some awesome things in the past, and he still says awesome things. Um, you know, his JavaScript piece was great, and uh, respect to the man for that. I just don't necessarily agree with some of the people, things other folks are doing about free software, as in the Apple Genius thing is mm. obviously terrible uh, and embarrassing, actually, and probably hurting ourselves. You know, we don't tend to say much fanboy stuff on Tux Radar. We do offset that, that Linux versus Windows 7 piece was a little bit biased, but we are a Windows site, uh, a Linux site, sorry, so <laughs> quite frankly. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the people were yeah, saying, yeah, people yeah. were saying, you know, I, I came here expecting to read a wonderful unbiased piece and haven't you seen the URL folks? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, it's Tux Radar. We're all Linux users. Of course we're going to say Linux wins. Um, because we wouldn't, we wouldn't be a Linux site otherwise. Oh well. Um, so yes, I, we don't do very much biased stuff. Um, I don't think we're zealous. We're not zealous, are we? Really? No, I don't think so. Perhaps we ought to be. Lol, you install Te Linux now. <laughs> 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 it's Te better than your crappy OS. <laughs> no, but it's about freedom, isn't it? And it's about respecting other people's freedom to make their own decisions. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And with such firm conclusion, we come to the end of our podcast. Once again, all the notes for this podcast are on the website. Are you playing? What's that? Who who did that? That's a copyrighted sound, isn't it? (laughs) Is it? Who owns that? What, Sega or somebody? Lord Mendelssohn. <laughs> Lord Mendelssohn. You're not respecting Nintendo's freedom. I'm not. No, I will. I will pay. I will go and buy a Nintendo game just to uh, to refund them for that. Right. I've got a little quiz as the one more thing. Remember, we were talking ages ago about the distros we started using when we first started using Linux. Montevideo. Um, is almost correct. It was actually um, Buenos Aires. But um, how many Red Hat Linux release code names can you remember? Zod. Not quite. Damn. Z- what? Not, not Zod. Zod. General Zod, no. No, Zod. You're, you're very close. Yeah. You're very close. It's not Zod. Damn. What it was Zoot. That no, wasn't? Zoot. It was? 6.2. No, later than that. Like 9 or something. 8. 9 was Shrike. It's a Python thing, isn't it? What was Neil Zoot. before Zod? Neil before Zod. That was, that was from Superman. Superman. One of them. I'm sure one of them was called Zod. Anyway. Nope, it's not in my list. Leonard Das. Which release? That's 11. 11. Oh, that's Fedora. I'm talking Red Hat here. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. Fail. <laughs> <laughs> no idea. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's have some. So, is there a general theme? Monty Python? No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> well, we should remember the 7.3 one, shouldn't we? We should remember the yeah, 7.3. That was key, wasn't it? Rawhide. Nope, that was the development <laughs> branch. <laughs> Where's my iPhone? <laughs> <laughs> um... Do you remember when you installed Red Hat 5.1? Jaunty. <laughs> I do remember, yeah, but I don't remember. Don't remember the uh, 
name for it. Red Hat 2009 Free right. One Spring Edition. <laughs> <laughs> Turbo Championship Edition. I'll just run through some of the recent ones quickly then. 5.0 Hurricane, 5.1 Manhattan, 5.2 Apollo, 6.0 Hedwig, 6.1 Cartman, 6.2 Zoot, 7.0 Guinness, 7.1 Seawolf, 7.2 Enigma, 7.3 Valhalla, 8... Oh, remember oh. Valhalla? 8, Psyche, and 9, Shrike. They're impressively random. They are. Yeah, I don't think there's any thread going between them. Were they allowed to use Guinness? Well, surely there's mysticism, isn't there? You've got Psyche, Shrike, and Valhalla at the very least. And Cartman. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thanks for that, Mike. Well, Once that, again, that's put us in our place. <laughs> <laughs> Proving our absolute incompetence with Linux history. <laughs> And if you can do better than that, uh, post some comments on the podcast. Honestly, telling us how many of them you knew. Don't forget, you can tune in two weeks' time for more random trivia taken from Wikipedia. And we'll see you then. Remember, I'm Graham Morrison. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> <Don't mind. laughs>